Hello folks, Nick Barnaby here with the Digby Model Railway here in Digby, Nova Scotia. Purchased by the Windsor and Annapolis Railway, the Western Counties Railroad bought for $265,000 this combination in 1894 would create the Dominion Atlantic Railroad, which ran from Yarmouth to Halifax. The builder, engineer, and the general manager, Vernon Smith, of the Windsor-Annapolis Railway would go on to create history, as it were. Um, between Annapolis Royal and Digby, there was no line there. So, they had to um, purchase a boat to go back and forth from Annapolis to Digby. And for the longest while, it was the Princess Helene that would service the missing link. The Dominion Atlantic Railroad was a booster for tourism and agriculture in the valley. Um, of course, the railroad meant that you could get all of your vegetables and your livestock to market quite on time. And tourism, well, we'll get back to that in a few minutes. The headquarters of the Dominion Atlantic Railroad was in London, United Kingdom, which, of course, then would have been England. In 1912, after the purchase by Canadian Pacific, they would have moved the headquarters to Montreal, Quebec. And again, one more time, in Kentville, Nova Scotia. Don't know when, but I'm assuming it's after, uh, sometime after the purchase. Henry Wadsworth would have wrote Evangeline, A Tale of Acadia, which I'm assuming is something about the deportation of the French in Nova Scotia, uh, in 1847, which is where the Mini Atlantic Railway would have got the name Land of the Evangeline Route. Um, still legally incorporated, it files annual stocks and tax returns to this day. It had track rights over the old Intercolonial Railway, NSR, uh, Windsor branch. So, from Windsor Junction to Windsor, that's where the Intercolonial branch would have been. And, it would have also had track rights from the IRC mainline, uh, the junction there to Halifax, so the Main Atlantic Railway would actually be able to service from Yarmouth to Halifax. Uh, there were, again, gap in the track in Annapolis to Digby. That would have been in the 1890s, the same time that they were purchasing iron knuckles to come in to replace the pin uh, connectors. Uh, the Dominion Atlantic Railroad connected with the Midland Railway, the Nova Scotia Central Railway, the Middleton and Victoria Beach Railway, and, of course, the Halifax and Southwestern Railway. Of course, the Middleton and Victoria Beach Railway, as well as the Nova Scotia Central Railway, would be purchased by the Halifax and Southwestern Railway in years to come. In 1901, there was 9 of 13 steamships, meaning that there was 4 more steamships on the way. Um, MV Kippawo would be the 13th and last steamship to operate for the Dominion Atlantic Railway and was terminated sometime during the Second World War. The North Mountain Railroad would have created a western expansion again in 1905 kingsport line connecting to centerville and later expanded to weston uh documented 1914 one of the most well-known um express engines would have been the flying blue nose which would have pulled a rake of pullman coaches as well as a pullman parlor another well-known vehicle for the Dominion Atlantic Railroad would have been the New Yorker, which would have traveled from Yarmouth to Boston and New York. The Dominion Atlantic Railway 
had purchased land at Grand Pre and had built a church as well as a community garden to serve as a reminder of what happened in Acadia years ago. The purchase of that land skyrocketed tickets and passengers close to 200,000 for the first five years. November 3rd, 1911, the Dominion Atlantic Railroad was bought out by Canadian Pacific. And in 1915, they began to expand and upgrade. 1915 is when I believe they moved the headquarters from Montreal, Quebec to Kentville, Nova Scotia. And in the 60s, we saw the beginning of dieselization. And what that would have looked like, two Alco 53 units were used for several months um, just to test to see what these diesels were all about. Later, replacing those two Alco S3s, 10 EMD SW1200Rs replaced all the steam engines except for one, as well as S3s. There's only one steam locomotive left now for the Dominion Atlantic Railway, and that would be the switcher in Kentville. CPR number 6227, which would have been there from 1946 until 1961. So it wasn't there that long. They would go on to purchase three more of the AMD SW. 1200 errors. Later, the Bud Company Rail Diesel Electric Cars, other known as the Dayliner, what I know as the Bud Liner, um, would have been purchased and used for the railway. Which that and the S3s would have been the only diesel engines with Dominion Atlantic Railroad on their siding in 1970 onwards. And from there, we really see the declining of business for the Dominion Atlantic Railway. Um, we watched the collapse of the Annapolis Valley Apple business. The Main Atlantic Railroad sold wholesale chains, which that would have included the um, Pines Motel in Digby, Nova Scotia. They also sold the Grand Prix in 1987. So it was a slow process that the Main Atlantic Railway was beginning to close its doors. They just did not have much money. Um, another blow, 1971, the ferry outside of Digby, um, which was literally a kilometer or so away from the station, would have moved to the Digby gut, and that's where it's located today, servicing the Princess of Acadia. In the 1970s, the Main Atlantic Railway noted service below Kentville was going to pretty much be a branch line. So now the whole of the Main Atlantic Railway under Canadian Pacific's control, one big branch line, which means we went from a stoic railway company to a branch line. And with that being said, the Canadian Pacific Railroad began to reduce its passenger service. In 1970, a new highway was installed from Halifax to Kentville. It was called Highway 101. The most profitable business on the Dominion Atlantic Railway um, was the gypsum traffic just east of Windsor. And because of that, 
today that is the only line from the Dominion Atlantic Railway towards um, Halifax. That's the only line still in service and they closed that a few years ago. In 1978, uh, from Halifax to Yarmouth, the line was sold to Crown Corporation, a.k.a. Via Rail. 1979, the last mixed train in America closed. That mixed train would have belonged to the Dominion Atlantic Railway. So we're really seeing an end of an era. Um, 1983... Uh, schedule change for passenger service. So instead of instead of what tickets they could sell, they were beginning to see the tickets were up, passengers were up, and that would have lasted three years until Ma the Mantua to Truro had closed. Nineteen eighty eight, all money services. Closed. CP. So we are really seeing that business is down. It's done. And in the late 80s, the final stretch of the 101 to Yarmouth was finished. 1990 cuts to Via, meaning track was abolished. And in 1993, the last freight train on the Dominion Atlantic Railway would haul whatever was left out of there. Meaning, no more tracks. Nothing. Boxcars, gone. Everything has been removed. And from there, we see stations begin to rot. Towns like Digby looking at the stations and saying that they were eyesores, so of course they had to be ripped out. Water towers destroyed, and the old tracks being purchased by rails to trails, and ultimately all railroading history on the Dominion Atlantic Railway is now null and void. I'm Nick Barnaby. Thanks for watching. What time is it? Oh, I think it's time for supper. Maybe a smoke too. Smoke would be good right now. Y'all have a good evening. Take care.